Well, I haven't painted a figure in a long time, so let's see how this goes. <laughs> I decided to start with the humble Hormigaunt because, well, there's a lot of them. And because of this swarm nature, they aren't as individually eye-catching like a Carnifex or Neurothrope. This means I can work in batches of 10 and refine my painting skills, practice blending and dry brushing, getting the colour scheme down, and any conspicuous learning curve will be concealed by the fact that the early paint jobs will be hidden amongst the latter, and hopefully better, later stage batches. I hauled them out of the box and started cutting them from the sprues with some wire cutters. Then using the blade edge of a scalpel I cut away the excess that used to be called flashing but I've got no idea what it's called now. And with the remains of the sprues removed I flipped the blade and used the dull edge to scrape away the mould lines and the last bits and bumps before assembly began. Now with two models I tried it the other way round. This is a mistake. The pressure from the knife was just too much. As you can see, it broke from the base and the secondary limbs have white strain marks as they are now all wobbly and weak. Clean and prep them and then assemble them. Lesson learned. And they are such fun to assemble, playing around with the poses, claws up, out, down, heads down, look inside or screaming upward into the air. This was a really fun process. I found that you have to insert the rear into the slaughter base and raise up the front, otherwise they just pitch forward. They are seriously unstable in their normal pose, and when I looked into it, others have used a washer or a ball bearing to create a counterweight to stop this happening. However, I have my own solution in mind. Now, on to priming. I started with Citadel Chaos Black, but ran out about two thirds of the way through the army I had bought and prepped so far. With the shops still shut due to lockdowns, I had to order another one online. For some reason, Citadel was going to ship in about three weeks, but I've got figures that need priming now. So Army Painter was only a couple of days out, so I ordered one of those and hoped it wouldn't cause any problems. The Citadel stuff is very matte, and the Army Painter has a tiny bit more shiny to it, but otherwise they went on just about the same. Now, to make sure my eyeballs didn't catch fire from straining so hard on all these tiny toys, I decided to get something to see with. I went with a Lancosk magnifying desk lamp. It's five times magnification and you can ramp up or lower the strength, which comes in a cold blue, a normal and a warmer shade that's easier on the eyes and is therefore ideal when doing base layers. When it arrived, there was a card telling me that if I registered it, they'd send me a free magnifying glass. Free? Well, that's always the right price. So dubious, but hopeful, I registered and lo and behold, it actually arrived and is surprisingly really good. It's big, has good magnification and a zoom spot, and best of all, it lights up so you can admire your high fleet at night. Okay, to painting. First, McCrag blue base for the skin, and then Zira's purple layer on the carapace, talons, hooves, and scything talons. I've seen lots of schemes doing the opposite, purple skin and blue carapace, but growing up on Rogue Trooper from 2000 AD, blue skin has always been a favourite. I was concerned that I never came across this scheme. Is there something wrong with it? I mean, is it going to come out awful? Whatever. I've started, so I'll finish. Now I really like the Nihiliac Oxide technical colour, how you pronounce it. I wanted it for the internals, a kind of bioluminescent glow coming from the non-armoured areas. But when I applied it, it just didn't pop because of the dark base. The solution? Some white scar base applied to the joints and the gills and the mouths and those exposed tongues. Once that was dried, the oxide technical went on top and it settled nicely into the ridges and left the raised points white and glowing. Next, I grabbed a big brush and smothered them in null oil. I tried a couple of times watering it down a bit, but the best results were straight from the bottle, so no wonder it's a bit bigger. I added a little more to the eyes and where the carapace meets the skin to make those areas a little darker. Now here comes the stuff that's going to need some technique. A dab of cold red on talon and hoof tips and a bit of water to wash it up. I then painted the tips of the scything talons red, wandered it up and applied a fresh layer of purple above and then quickly blended them together to create a nice transition up the blade. It went well sometimes, others not so much. It still looked good, but some of them definitely had a more gradual and smooth pattern. 
Onto the Imric Blue Dry. I dabbed the brush in and painted the tail tip and moved it up towards the body. Now while doing this, the paint was leaving the brush and at the end there was exactly the perfect amount of residual paint to begin dry brushing the legs, the wrists, the ribs and the sides of the head to bring out the cheeks, jaws, teeth and whatever those holes are along the side of their head. I, I don't know what the hell that thing is. Now that I got some dry brushing practice in with the blue, time to do it for real. Jean Steeler Purple, and I either shed the excess on my thumbnail, a palette, or a tissue, and then added a few swipes to catch the raised ridges of the carapace. Now the really tricky bit. Let's hope those years of playing Operation as a kid come in handy. A dab of moot green and an artificer citadel brush. Moving in slow, sometimes I got the perfect line right on the eyeball. Other times I missed a little, but because of the extra known oil, all I needed was a little Abaddon black once the green was dry to remove the excess, or conceal it anyway, and get the nice single glowing eye emanating from the shadows under the carapace. After seeing some effects for power swords, and because of what I was intending for the bases, I decided that I wanted to make the scythe in talons look less like they were red from blood. So a little wild rider's red, and I dry brushed the blades and the sides, just to catch those edges a little. So here's a little strike force ready to go. And I bought a Rudster display case from Ikea, because now that I'm painting them, I didn't want dust or cat fur accumulated on them. Yes, Bento, you little monster, I'm looking at you. Right, onto the base that I'm hoping will solve my balance problems. I ordered that Citadel Skulls box set, so now I've got 99 problems, but 340 itty bitty skulls ain't one of them. First though, let's get that paint job protected. I've seen a few people complaining about Citadel and there's better reports coming in on the Army Painter Anti-Shine. Gave it a bloody good shake and at 30 centimeters distant, a couple of quick blasts from behind and then a couple from the sides and then from below to get on the ribs and the underside of the talons and then another couple from above and I let that dry. From Small Weld Slate and Stone Store, I got a bag of natural slate stone under an, uh, an eighth of an inch and dumped it in a Ziploc. Some Elmer's School glue, added a couple of generous blobs and I snagged one of my older brushes and began to work it all over the base right up to the edges, getting a nice even layer. Thanks camera for ignoring the thing right in front of you and focusing on the bottle of glue in the background. Once that's on, I placed the figure in the box and sprinkled slate all over the base. Once it was covered, a gentle push of a finger on each side to ensure plenty of pieces get attached in the glue and in a shake to get rid of most of the excess. Once it was dry, I flipped it over and gave a couple of taps with some tweezers to shed those final loose bits. I glued a skull in place, painted it with white scar and gave it a little null oil wash and then broke out the trusty glue gun. A nice blob of glue to form the dissolving body and before it dried I used the nail to create some ridges and make it less even and to give it some connections to the skull and also some material on the bone. Another option was a piece of dried liquid latex that when you tear a piece away from the main lump it gives you a nice fleshy looking chunk. I glued it near the skull or even just placed it on its own in some cases and used the glue gun to mold it into the slate and also create some connection to the skull. The hairs can get a little out of control but are easily brushed away. Using the nail it made it a little more craggy before it dried. I dipped another nail into the contact cement and kept it turning so that the droplet didn't fall off and then applied it to the base. Blowing on it immediately helped harden the exterior and stopped it seeping into the slate and vanishing and this gave me a nice spherical ball of glue. I let it dry for a few minutes and then used the nail. I pressed into the ball, pierced the skin and then dragged out lines of glue to attach to the skull and the slate giving it some nice gory strings of melting flesh. I made sure to get some on the side of the skull so you get the impression that the biomass is slowly sloughing away and you don't have a bleached skull next to a pile of torn meat. I added some more blobs to a, of the glue to expand the effect and I let it completely dry and then started painting. You can use a soft toothbrush to get rid of those lingering fine hairs of glue from the gun. For the humans, or elves or whatever, I applied corn red as a base to the glue with some dabs out across the slate for blood spray. 
then more red with just a dab of black and then watered it down to create a nice wash that made for some sweet shadows and then applied some highlights with sweeps of Army Painter Dragonfire Red. For the boys, Army Painter Treant Green with a wash of Warp Lightning Contrast and then Moot Green for the highlights. To toughen the strands and secure the slate and give the paint job a final layer of protection, I gave each another couple of blasts from behind, a couple more from each side, and then to the front and another couple of blasts from above. And here we go, a horde of Hormigants, half of them with just plain slate to keep them upright, and the other half dancing over dissolving biomass as it becomes a nice nutritious goo ready to be funneled up to the awaiting bioships. Gotta say, I'm exceedingly happy with the results. Next up, something a little more significant. On to the Tyranid Warriors.